How long does it take to close on a house from the time your offer is accepted to the time you walk out with your keys? Well, that's the topic of my next video. How long does it take to close on a house from the time your offer is accepted to the time you leave the closing table with your keys in hand? That's the topic of this video. Hello, everybody. My name is Mark Schreier, and I'm a licensed sales associate with Century 21 American Homes Real Estate right here on Long Island, New York. So let's jump right into it. The timeline, and yes, it can vary. I'm going to give you an educated estimate of the process and the timeline. Understand that things can vary. Also, I'm going to include or make an offer available to all of you for a free home buyer's guide. So make sure you stay tuned to the latter part of the video and I will show you how to take advantage of that free home buyer's guide offer. Right down to it. Number one, are you paying cash for the property or are you using financing? If you're using financing and 85% at least of the people here on Long Island do, what type of financing are you using? If you're using a conventional mortgage, if you're using a government backed, either an FHA or a VA mortgage, they all have to take, they all have different steps that you need to take into consideration. And a conventional could be a little shorter than a VA or an FHA loan. Let's touch on the cash right now. If you have cash and you're paying all cash for your property, you can close in as little as two weeks, if not sooner. It's more seller buyer dependent. What do I mean by that? I mean that the seller and the buyer make the circumstances of when they want to leave and when the uh, buyer wants to move in and it's totally up to them. It's a wonderful thing. But if you do get an all cash offer as a seller, make sure you have proof of funds that you know that you're holding up your sale and the person actually has the money. So make sure your realtor checks proof of funds and you're satisfied with how they did it. I'm going to be concentrating a little more now on those people that choose financing. If you have a conventional mortgage, you are subject to appraisals, home inspections, and things of that nature. The home inspection is usually for you. Most attorneys will not let you buy a house unless you get it inspected, except if you are a contractor yourself, and then it's not much of an issue because you are your own home inspector. Now, when you buy the house, you want to make sure that you line your ducks up in a row. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to include a video, a link to a video down in the bottom. There'll be a link of the home buyer checklist, and that will get in much more detail about what you need to know before you get um, ready to go out and shop because you don't want to lose that great deal once you find it, that perfect house. I'm going to touch on it now. Basically, you need to have all your documents, whether it be tax returns, whether it be W-2s, ready to show your uh, um, mortgage person before you find the house of your dreams. So contact the mortgage person and get pre-approved. Pre-qualified, pre-approved, there is a difference. Make sure your mortgage person, you say, I want to show you the documents so you know everything that I need, I have. Don't just fill out some information online and they say you've been pre-approved for X amount of dollars because when it comes down to it, you might have accidentally hit the wrong key and now you might be $50,000 off and you can't buy the house that you thought you could. So make sure you get those documents also by going through that exercise. You have everything ready for your pre-approval and it gets the process going. I would suggest starting about 18 months uh, out so you're shopping for the house and everything so you have plenty of time to work yourself through the process pre-planning will definitely go a long way how do you pick a lender pick somebody that has been recommended by friends relatives by your realtor somebody that does this and they're easy to communicate with the last thing you want to deal with is somebody that you call and they don't get back to you for four days uh, because you're missing documents and that gets me to the next um, thing that's very important. You. Are you the type of person that's organized? Are you the type of person that when they say I need your W-2 forms or I need your income tax forms from uh, the last amount of uh, X years, three years, let's say, just throwing that out there. I am not a mortgage person. But 
the, the uh, last three years, do you know where they are? Or are you going to have to get them from somebody else? So you need to plan ahead to make sure all these documents are ready so you can furnish them to your mortgage person and things can run as smoothly as possible. I can ask a mortgage guy or, you know, uh, how long does the process take? Well, their answer usually is, if I have all the documents, it can run very quickly and very smoothly. But that's a big if I have. So make sure you take uh, do what you need to do to get all your ducks lined up in a row. And on that note, I have another video that I'm going to include a link in the bottom, another video on the home buying checklist. It will give much more detail on what it is that you need to know about the home buying process. So make sure you check out that video after you watch this video, naturally. One thing I can't stress enough, particularly here on Long Island, when you get your offer accepted, the house is not yours. There's actually no money in in, on Long Island that's been transferred from anybody. It's just an agreement that I agree to sell the house under these terms and conditions to the Mr. Buyer, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, but it's usually contingent on a home inspection and going through the appraisal process, getting funding for the loan. So let's talk about the actual um, home inspection. You need to make sure on Long Island, particularly in the strong seller's market we're in, that your house is inspected, I would say, within three days. Three days from the time you have an accepted offer. And yes, that includes weekends. Home inspectors do work weekends. If your home inspector tells you they are two to three weeks out, find another home inspector. There are plenty of them out there. Get referrals from neighbors, friends, realtors that have used one recently and make sure that they are time friendly, that they can work with you within that three to five day window because you don't want to lose the deal because your home inspection is taking forever. So that's an important note. Again, being proactive, uh, finding your home inspector beforehand will help you and help speed this timeline and could save you the actual house. Next thing to consider is the appraisal process. Your appraisal process will happen after your house is already under contract, at least here on Long Island, New York. You've got the home inspection, everything worked out there. You've now given the contracts to your attorneys. When both sides have signed the contract, it will go now for the appraisal. The bank or the mortgage uh, banker, the underwriters, will start checking all the documents, this and that, making sure the house appraises. Now, each bank or each lender, government um, back loans as well, have a loan-to-value ratio. They want to make sure that if you default on this loan, they're getting their money back. So they're going to go out within a certain time frame and they're going to do an appraisal. Now, yeah, I have more videos on that too. <laughs> there will be a link for the appraisal process. You can check it down below. The appraisal process where I interviewed an actual mortgage um, appraiser and he tells you what's involved in the mortgage process. I will tell you that an FHA or a government bank loan, a VA as well, are more strict in the process, so make sure that you ask them ahead of time so if anything is missing in your house, you can take care of that beforehand so you don't lose the deal because the appraisal process is taking forever. That can upset the seller and also you as the buyer. You want to be proactive, and naturally that would be a tip for the seller to make sure everything is in line and your realtor should be able to go through the house with you and give you a lot of tips and pointers on that particular thing. So after your your house passes appraisal, the next thing you want to do is you're going to schedule a closing date. Or should I say, after the appraisal is over, the underwriters will give a commitment. And once the commitment is done and the attorneys are all satisfied, they're going to set a closing date. The last thing in the process is a walkthrough. Now, I do have a uh, video on the final walkthrough. I'm going to include a link in the bottom, but that is usually done a day before. So you make sure everything that you agreed on in the house is still there when you go to the closing tables the day uh, after that or two days after that if scheduling is a problem. So the average time it should take from the time you go, um, your, from the time your offer is accepted to the time you walk out with your keys, I would say between two to three months, 60 to 90 days, again, depending on how things go, all the paperwork and everything else. If, and I did promise there's going to be a free home buyer's guide. The link is right below. So make sure if you want to take advantage of that, 
you click the link below for the free home buyer's guide. I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, share the channel. This is Mark Sharp from Century 21 American Homes, and thanks for watching.